Hi, I'm John Dexter, the creator of Alpha Dogs. It's on Kickstarter right now until November 4th. I'm also on Twitter at Real Alpha Dogs and on Instagram at uh, Alpha underscore Dogs underscore Comedy. You're listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. It feels like he was just here yesterday. Coming back for issue three of Alpha Dogs, we're joined today by the ever-talented John Dexter. How are you doing today? Good. How you doing, Kurt? It's a pleasure to be back on your on your show. Uh, yeah, we're about uh, a little less than two weeks left to alpha dogs well when this airs it'll be have about four days left before <laughs> alpha dogs ends but uh it's all good the campaign's doing really well matched our funding goal so we're still going at it and uh, hopefully can add a lot more people and that was that was one thing that we kind of touched on last interview was about the the second jobs of kickstarter and crowdfunding campaigns at that too how has this time around been for you it's uh, just been just as hectic. <laughs> you know, it's a nonstop promo, promo and messaging, annoying people. You're just trying to get the word out. It's, it's tough being an indie creator. That's what social media is for, is, is getting uh, the message out to say, hey, come look at me. Unfortunately, I don't have huge budgets or anything like that being an indie creator. So we kind of hit in the street, uh, knocking on doors, sometimes uh, busting them through <laughs> to try to get people to uh, take a look at your your work. There's It's a very crowded field. Ever since COVID, a Kickstarter has grown exponentially and a lot of it's comic books. And I know Kickstarter had said they kind of wanted to focus on comic book creators. So it's uh, there's definitely a plethora. And then we've got big names that are uh, even publishers that are going to Kickstarter. So it's it, there's a lot to choose from. So you got to work that much harder to get your product out there. Yeah. So this time around, how's the social media push been? Because I, like you said, it, it's been a flood of campaigns, especially in these in these fall months too. It just feels like as soon as September hit, there was like a flood of, I have a Kickstarter, I have a Kickstarter, I have a Kickstarter. It's like, wow. With COVID, um, it's just, and a lot of people had expendable money too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody wants to make a comic book. If you're a comic book fan, you want to make a comic book. Well, now was your chance because you're sitting at home, not a lot to do, and have some extra money when they were handing out the the checks there. <laughs> so I think that really made a big difference um, because it's just amazing how much it's flooded now. Uh, I can definitely tell the difference just from uh, March when I ran the campaign for Alpha Dogs Issue 2. It's just, it's crazy the people out there doing it now. So, which is, I mean, it's got its good and its bad points, but I find myself having to work uh, so much harder now than what I did. It's a learning process, every Kickstarter. So I've learned a lot more better tricks of the trade to try to beat the uh, algorithms out there. So it's gotten easier in a sense of, I know what I'm doing more, but tougher because uh, so many comic book Kickstarters to choose from now. So let's talk about issue three here. Uh, you, you touched on it briefly last interview, but this time around, let, let's focus in on number three. Tell us what issue three is all about and, and what can we expect from this amazing series uh, at this point? Issue three is kind of the culmination of the building of issue one and two. It's really exciting. Well, the story itself is about this dog named Buck, uh, this overgrown pit bull. He's got a great heart, but because he's his breed and his, he's huge, uh, the public fear him. He's kind of like that Casper the Friendly Ghost, you know, the, by looks alone, he's feared, but he's actually got a great heart. Well, this uh, pit bull named Buck has been on the run with his owner, Ina, and this older p- pit bull named Cyrus. And the reason being is these dogs have the ability to heal from most any wound. They uh, are smart enough to understand human speak and they have a heightened strength. This group of mercenaries called uh, Blackrock have been on the after the dogs all of Buck's life. So him and his own and this older pit bull have been changing their names, going here, going there across the United States and even overseas to try to get away from the group of mercenaries. And we pick up on the story with them living in this South Carolina house, in this farmhouse, seemingly finally at peace and with nothing to worry about. And then until the owner of the pit bulls brings her new boyfriend home and she actually divulges to him, which she's never done before, the dog's secret of their abilities. 
And little does she know, he already knows of the dog's powers and has developed this serum that once in possession of the dog's blood, he can create his own dogs with incredible power. So uh, we have this tension between Buck, the dog Buck, and his owner because their owner has kind of pushed the dogs aside, kind of betrayed them by telling her new boyfriend of their abilities, and it starts this domino effect. If you like stories that have you know, many facets of a mystery and these running storylines, then you really enjoy Alpha Dogs. It's kind of like Why the Last Man and and Lost, where we have this big mystery of how the dogs got their powers and this um, cabal of mercenaries after them. Um, and then you also have the storyline of this man with a revenge plot that we don't yet know that's creating dogs with their own distinct abilities. Issue two, we see the serum work on the scientist's dog becomes this big hulking dog. Dog. And while the dog's owner has been fooled and was fooled into giving him, her boyfriend, the dog's blood, unknowingly uh, that he was creating these dogs with the, their own incredible powers for his revenge plot, it all kind of comes to a head with the mercenaries kind of tracking Ina down and with this this guy creating his own dogs with incredible powers. But there was a lot of people who loved the first two issues. About 50% of people from issue two huh. are returning for issue one. So I'm hoping even more, which is always a good sign that you wrote something that people are enjoying if they come back for the second one. Because usually on a Kickstarter, you get about 30 to 35% of returns from the previous issue. and. With issue one to two, I had over 50, and this time I've got 50 right now. So it's people are liking what they're reading. It's just getting the word out there so people will know what to look for. And, and I'm sure now that comic conventions are kind of getting in, back into the swing of things, you're, you're able to, to hint at more upcoming projects and everything like that to people that are purchasing issues one or two that haven't maybe read the series as well. Just started doing the Comic-Con thing. I have went to I only got to go to three this year. Oh, okay. um, I only had two comics to sell at the time. But in 2023, I plan on going to a lot more conventions. I'll have Alpha Dogs, at least Alpha Dogs 1, 2, and 3. And then my other comic book, Dime Store Detective, will hopefully be on issue 2 uh, by the time the conventions start up early summer. Yeah, obviously, the art has been amazing all the way through. Uh, you have a talented team with you as well. Just, let's refresh those that, that haven't seen the last interview uh, as to your, your art, amazing art team. and. Uh, letters etc yeah so stolen tower studio out of argentina they are doing all the art for issue three they did all the issue um art one and two as well they're uh, absolutely terrific top notch i did a kind of a cold call over facebook for artists seeking uh writers seeking artists and they uh brought their portfolio and they were just heads and tails above everybody else so i hired them right on the spot and um i haven't been disappointed at all they've done it just over a um, much better job than I could even imagine. If you go to the Kickstarter, you'll see a preview of the first six pages. Uh, you can see the trailer that they put together, which is just top notch. Uh, you can actually see all three of the trailers on the uh, Kickstarter page, and they're all, I would put those trailers against any Kickstarter trailer uh, going right now. It's just, they're really exciting. And you can see the art on there as well. It's uh, they're they're great. I mean, they could be. They've done work for Marvel, for IDW, for DC, for Boom. Uh, they've done it all. Truly, a, a very a talented team for sure. It's even given me some ideas of maybe how to put a trailer together for the show too. So I kind of I kind yeah. of like what they've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I, said, I wrote the script because I was a big fan of the Watchmen motion comic. So I was like, God, that's what I, I want to do something like that. And they just went beyond what I thought they'd be able to do so for the budget so it was, it was pretty cool if you can't get pumped for the comic watching the trailer then I don't know what else I can do <laughs> just promote issue four then <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> We're looking at this as long haul. I believe you mentioned there was going to be a five issue series with this, if, if I recall correctly. We have five volumes uh, oh, is, right. is to end it. And I'm thinking about 45, maybe 50 issues. So <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a long haul, but it's very exciting so far. Like I said, the first two issues people really enjoyed. And I, I do my best not to have too much exposition just to jump into the meat of it. And if you read them, then you'll see that it's definitely fast paced. The person just read issue one and two, and he's like, God, I, I was so mad when it ended because you left off at 
pretty good cliffhanger. So um, I told him, if you're not a big fan of cliffhangers, then you're not going to like issue three because it's, there's a pretty big cliffhanger in uh, issue three. But issue two builds up to issue three, and there's a lot of excitement that goes on. And Ina, who's the dog's owner, has been played the fool for most of the series. And then she kind of realizes that Salem is not the wonderful glowing boyfriend that that she thought him to be what do you think makes good cliffhanger other than the ones that you've created for comic a good cliffhanger is something that's feasible that it will get resolved in the next issue i just don't like when they sell something that and then you see the next issue it's like hold on a second you tidy that up too way too easy so uh, a good cliffhanger just it, it leaves you wanting more Lost was really good at those uh, comic books, you know, certain comic books are really great at those. I remember Why the Last Man, I was a big fan of that series. Brian K. Vaughn, he was great at those cliffhangers. So just leave him wanting more and with some dire consequences, but make sure you pay it off that you don't cheat in the next issue to pay it off. I was going to ask, actually, you know, what's a, what's a comic series that had a cliffhanger that paid off in spades? And what's a comics uh, cliffhanger that just didn't go anywhere for you that you can remember? Oh, God. Most of those X-Men, I mean, as much as I love Chris Claremont, some of those X-Men cliffhangers, I was like, what? I wasn't... I, the, it, you thought they'd resolve it, but it was a cliffhanger and they didn't even touch on, on the next issue. And then you, it took a while and they came around. It was not so much something to resolve, just something to keep your interest to, to buy the next issue. So that was a little bit, but um, the cliffhangers that I thought were really great was like I said, why the last man? And uh, she had a lot of great cliffhangers on that, but I kind of try to structure Alpha Dogs like that, kind of very much in a movie movie script scenario. It definitely played out as a series, but I really enjoyed the B storyline, the A storyline that kind of went with Why the Last Man and Lost. And I try to use that technique with Alpha Dogs. So there's a lot of mysteries there, like how the dogs got their powers and uh, why Salem is on this revenge plot where he's creating his own dogs with, with incredible powers. And we go along, it's kind of like, you know, peeling away an onion. And it just gets getting stinkier as it goes along. So it's definitely something will hold anybody's interest that reads it. And if you're a dog fan, you'd love it too. <laughs> it's definitely serious for, for dog lovers. I would love to see, you know, uh, pictures of real life people that have purchased the comics next to their pets reading it. I think that would be a yeah, really that would cool be, viral yeah. thing or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Maybe you should you should hint at that for uh, your, one of your updates. Hey, I'd love to see you reading this book to your pets. You know, you should you should pick this up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with that would, that would be great. We've got it here and there for issue three. There's ten of them available. We've already sold six of them. Where on the inside back cover, you can have a picture of your dog in full color uh, in the comic book. So people have really responded to that. They like that. That's one of the cool tiers. Another one we have is our artists will draw a cartoon drawing of your dog. You just send them the picture or send me the picture and I give it to him and he does a drawing of your dog and does it by hand. It's fully colored. And then he emails it to me because it's Argentina, but people have just absolutely loved that tier because he does such a great job. And anybody that's gotten the drawing of their dog have really loved it. What are, what are the tiers do you have? You have a digital and physical books as well? Yeah, so you can get the digital of issue one, two, and three all together for only 12 bucks. Just to buy issue one is $5, but I wanted to make kind of a deal to uh, get people to, to purchase all three issues because, you know, I really believe in the series. So I only charge 12 bucks for, the, for all three PDFs together. Um, and you can buy all the physical copies of the books for $30 altogether. So it's a really good deal for a Kickstarter comic book because it's, you know, 24 pages of content. So it doesn't skip any monies. I keep it as cost feasible for the readers as I can, because obviously I know I'm not going to get rich off of it, but I, I believe if I get enough eyes on it, then it can be a success. Well, I, I think so as well, too. I mean, and we've talked about this before, but you have great writing, you have a great art team. I mean, you're, you're yeah. putting the work and the effort into it as well, too. And I think that speaks volume to not only your quality as a creative person, but also that, like you said before, you, you believe in, in your product and the series. And I don't see how it can't be a success. 
Yeah, you you would think you, um, but it's it, it's tough. It's been a struggle to get people on board because it's like I said, there's a plethora of other comic books out there, and a lot of buying Kickstarter comics is knowing the artist, you know, having feeling like a connection there. So I got to do a better job of <laughs> connecting to the audience and the readers because that seems to be how a lot of people are a success on here. That and make TNA comics. So <laughs> I don't think anybody's interested in Naked Dog. So. <laughs> I got to deal with the story. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure there is something for everyone on the internet. Yeah, so you know, there um, obviously is. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's crazy. That's those seem to be the comics that do really well. So it's it's kind of an uphill fight, but I I believe the quality will win out in the end. And I think if people just give it a chance and read Alpha Dogs, they'll thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, I've never heard anybody who hasn't because it's a very original story and it's not a superhero story. It's even though it's got dogs that talk to each other, that's they have the incredible powers. It's grounded in a realistic story. You know, it's very adult themed. It's tackles, you know, neglect and pain. And this in this setting, though, it's, you know, a dog because the story itself, the theme kind of is a cautionary tale where you have this owner who, you know, loves this dog and it's just the greatest thing in the world. And then she finds this boyfriend and kind of pushes the dog aside. And it's much similar to when a parental unit, you know, gets this boyfriend and all of a sudden she spends her time and her enthusiasm for this new boyfriend or girlfriend that come into their lives. It's very much similar in that vein where the consequences of neglect for your loved one, who you're responsible for. Well, I do hate to say it, John, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Uh, I want to thank you again so much for coming on the show. I appreciate having me on. It's been fun again. <laughs> Before I let you go, where can we find you and how can we support you? Of course, uh, where's the Kickstarter and when does it end as well, too? So you can, it's under Alpha Dogs 3 with issue one and two catch up uh, tiers on Kickstarter. Just do a search of Alpha Dogs in comics and you'll find me or uh, type in my name, John Dexter, J O N D X T E R, and it'll pop up. And uh, I'm also on Twitter at Real Alpha Dogs and on Instagram at uh, Alpha underscore dogs underscore comic. And I'm on Facebook too. Of course. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Everyone's there. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, uh, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two, as well as our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website still because, you know, I'm one person. It's youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. And of course, our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash TGT Media. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on to Geek Talking. Thanks for having me on.